Hi, I am Nikki Clements, and welcome to December. As you may know, December is my busiest time of the year. I'm always working on all kinds of projects, many of them Christmas gifts, so I'm really motivated to try and get them done by the end of the year. And with that uptick in motivation means I'm inspired to do other projects I've wanted to do. So it can all get really overwhelming really quickly. So hopefully this video is pretty simple and straightforward. And as you may have guessed, it's gonna be 3D printer related. I've actually been doing a lot of 3D printing on my TiVo, which after just sitting here for basically two years doing nothing, I finally have it all tuned up and working extremely well. I'm also getting really comfortable with Fusion 360. It's getting to the point where I can just be like, I need a really specific thing. And then I can sit down at the computer and within 10 minutes I have a model and it's on its way to becoming a real world item. It's really cool and really satisfying. There is however still one thing that I'm not that happy with about all this and that is my current spool holder solution which is just a piece of PVC screwed onto the window. Now I actually got these nice rollers but they don't seem to work that well or at least not that well with this specific cardboard roller as twice I came in here and it had fallen off and ruined the print. Now I could 3D print a spool holder, there's no shortage of designs available online, but I think I can make something just as easily. Are you sure about that? The PVC rod actually works fine, and you know how much I like PVC. As it is, I'm extremely happy with the PVC stand that the printer is currently on. Works extremely well, and I actually think it looks really cool. So I'm definitely going to make it out of PVC. I'm just going to make it look a bit more printer spool holdery. With a bag of assorted half inch fittings, I start working out how I actually want to put together the stand. I grab a spool to get some measurements for how wide and tall it needs to be. I jot down some numbers and sketch out a rough shape for the spool holder. To try and make everything as even and symmetrical as I can, I'm going to head out to the shed and cut all the connecting PVC on the chop saw. With a stop block set up, I can cut out several pieces of PVC all the exact same size. And with those all cut out, I can start assembling the spool holder and see how it looks. Okay, so a couple of things. I didn't buy enough corner pieces, um, but more than that, I don't really have a way to easily get on a spool with this current design. Um, so I think I'm going to change it up a bit. Now I could actually just do something just like this, which would certainly be easy enough to get spools on and off. Um, I could throw an end cap on there just to help prevent it from coming off. And if I glued it all up, that should be pretty sturdy. However, my plan is actually to use a couple ball bearings so that the center rod can actually spin freely and so that there's very little friction when the spool is turning. And to do that, the bearing is almost the perfect size to fit inside one of these fittings. It just needs to be enlarged ever so slightly. So I'm thinking something more like that, a bit of asymmetry going on, looks a bit cooler, still plenty of support. And there we go, a nice, tight, flush fit. The bearing still turns freely, so that worked out really well. And I'll just get another bearing and do that to the 90 as well. There we go, got both of those done. 
Designing a small adapter to attach a length of PVC pipe to the bearing, I start by sketching two circles. And from there, it's pretty much just extruding them up, one a little bit more than the other, and that's basically it. I can send that off to the printer and see how well it fits. And here's our little 3D printed adapters for that. Ooh, that pops in there really nice. Same on that one. Pretty good fit there. There we go. That's pretty cool. It spins really nice. The inside diameter of PVC is not nearly as consistent as the outside is going to be. So if you're ever making, you know, plugs or something for it, it might fit perfectly, it might be too loose, it might be too tight. So you kind of have to adjust them on an individual basis to get a, the best fit. Oh. Well, that's pretty weak. All right, well, there's the first problem. I guess I should reprint those in the other orientation so that the layers are all going this way so that it'll be stronger in that direction. So that's no big deal. They're small, they'll print fast enough. Okay, this is actually looking pretty cool now. So I think I'm actually going to 3D print this entire bar and have it in like two parts and then maybe have them snap together with magnets. Maybe like slide it off, slide them out. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll try something like that. So I started recording this video about three hours ago and I really thought it was going to be just throwing a couple pieces of PVC pipe together and that was basically it. But uh, it is actually a lot more involved than I thought it was going to be. I really didn't give my design enough thought about how I'm actually going to get the spool on. I just finished redesigning the entire spool bar I just sliced it up in Cura and it's actually printing right now. But as I was doing that, I kind of had an idea of that uh, this is basically what I'd need, a uh, toilet paper to roll. And just using one of these would actually work quite well for this type of design where the frame is locked off and you need to be able to put the spool on and off. I think I came up with something similar for my 3D print, so we'll see if that works. Oh no! That's the wrong print. I'm printing the wrong thing. I need to nail I need to label my G code better. Body two. Yeah, that's that's easy to know. There it is, body two. Alright, those look good. Get this support material out. Oh, actually that's a pretty nice fit. Like half a millimeter deeper, but that'll work. Alright, now I designed these to actually get glued in place here. Um, it was just a lot easier to print them in separate parts and then glue them versus trying to print something like this and then just having all this extra support material. So. And these should snap together just like that. Well, it it spins okay. Um, these, I mean, these aren't the best bearings either, but I really didn't think about how important it is for these two bearings to be absolutely parallel in order for them to work um, to work really smoothly. So that is a bit of a design flaw, but uh, I am actually pretty happy with like this uh, magnetic spring mechanism that I've come up with here. Um, it's it's okay. I mean, it's gonna work. It's not gonna work as well as I would have liked. Um, in order for these bearings to really make a difference, I would have to make spacers so that the spool spits in the center. It's pretty good. It's not quite what I envisioned, but I think it's a good first draft. Just gonna go ahead and throw a couple 
rubber feet on the bottom. There, that's not gonna slide around. That's not too bad. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I don't know, that's not that bad. Off. On. That works just fine. So this can sit here. It's actually spinning really well now. So I was kind of writing this off as like a semi-fail, but uh, it actually works really well. There's almost too well. It That could almost be an issue with it unspooling too well. I'm actually pretty happy with it. So we'll, we'll see if I made it too good now. Either way, I think I can confidently take this thing down. Well, there you go. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's certainly working. I actually, I really do like the design. I think it looks quite cool. There certainly could be some improvements, but uh, once you get the spool on, then it's on and it works really well. It kind of does this fast forward thing, especially with this spool getting down near the end where there's quite a bit of tension in the smaller wind. I do think I might go ahead and try and build some spacers just to center the spool on that rod. I'd have to build a couple different size ones because pretty much every spool you get is going to have a different size hole unless you stick with the same brand. So I could make some sort of 3D printed thing to fit in here and equally space that out, but uh, I could also just take some foam and wrap that around it. And that works perfectly. Well, I wanted a better spool holder, and I certainly have one now. So my sincere thank you for watching once again. I am Nick D. Clements, if you're wondering. Make sure Nick... See there, it did the fast forward thing. Future, future Nick here. So I put a new heavier spool on it, uh, that spool, and well, it uh, tipped over. Which really isn't that surprising as the base is quite thin so it can tip over quite easily. I think using a T-fitting would be a better way to go instead of this tri-corner thing. I don't think this makes a perfect 90 as it's really challenging to get a good right angle in this arrangement. And using the T-fitting would make it really easy to make the base any size you want, adding a lot of stability. But for now, just to improve the stability of this current design, I'm going to swap out this front leg for this one. And that should definitely prevent it from tipping over now. And I actually really like the way this looks. I think the concept here is really good, but it just ended up being a lot more involved than I was expecting, especially for a simple spool holder. But I think it's okay. My sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nikki Clements. If you're wondering, Nick is short for Nicholas, and the D stands for December 2019. Anyway, I'm off to make something else. Why don't they sell TP size paper towel? I find it really convenient. Well, you know what they say. If they don't sell it, 